This video is part of the lectures related to the machine dynamics topic. It is the third video in the introduction section. This video is going to present and discuss the inversion of planar mechanisms. By the end of this video, first, you will be able to define what is the inversion of a mechanism. You will know what is the difference between a mechanism and its inversion. Second, you will be able to invert planar mechanisms. Starting from a given mechanism, you will be able to bring the inversion of that mechanism. You will know how to modify a mechanism, in order to devise its inversion. In order to achieve these two learning outcomes, the video will be divided into two parts. In the first part, we are going to present the definition of the mechanism's inversion. We will show how, starting from a given mechanism, it is possible to bring an inversion of that mechanism. Secondly, we are going to apply inversion to some examples. We are going to invert some mechanisms, and describe the difference between the original mechanism and its inversions. Let's start the first part and define what's the inversion of a mechanism, and describe how a mechanism can be inverted. A mechanism is constituted of elements called links. The links are connected together through kinematic pairs or joints. In a mechanism, on link is considered as the ground, or reference. The inversion of a mechanism is created, is carried out, by choosing a different ground, by moving the ground from one link to another. In this example, Link 1 is the ground. Link 1 is the reference for the kinematics of the mechanism. The inversion of the mechanism, is the same mechanism, with the same links, the same kinematic pairs, except that another link is considered as the ground. It is possible for example to choose link 2 as the ground. This mechanism is now an inversion of the original mechanism having link 1, as the ground. In this inversion link 2 is the reference for the other links. Any link can be a candidate to be a ground. There is no condition on links to be a ground or a reference. Thus, there is as many inversions as the number of links, the mechanism has. The choice of the link to be the ground, we will depend, on the type of motion required from the mechanism. The mechanism's inversion can have different motions from the original mechanism. Some inversions may have similar motions as the original mechanism. If the inversion gives different motions from the original mechanism, it is called a distinct inversion. If a mechanism has L links, then, it has L inversions, but the number of distinct inversions is lower or equal to L. Some inputs are possible with some inversions but they cannot work with other inversions. The choice of the input or the output degrees of freedom depends on the mechanism's inversion considered. Also, the choice of the inversion, depends on the input motion available and the output motion required. We have completed the first part defining what is an inversion of a mechanism. Let's move now to the second part. We are going to derive the inversions of some mechanisms. For the first example, we consider the four bar mechanism. This mechanism has four links, four bars. Thus, the mechanism has four possible inversions. 
As here all links are similar, all links are bars, the inversions are similar. All inversions have one ground and three rotating bars. The inversions are not substantially distinct. However, changing the ground, or inverting the mechanism, can interfere with the range of motion. A rotating bar can, or cannot, make full 360 degree rotation, depending on the inversion. Let's start now with the first inversion. In this inversion the blue bar is considered as the ground. In this case, the red, magenta, and green bars are all rotating. Mostly, the red and the green bars are one the input and the other is the output. The magenta bar is the coupler. Here, the red and green bars can undertake a full 360 degree rotation. They are called cranks. This mechanism is called a double crank four bar mechanism. Mostly, the ground is not represented as a separate link. Only connections with the ground are represented in the kinematic diagram. This first inversion is the schematized as follows. In this second inversion, the red bar is grounded. In this inversion, the blue, magenta, and green bars are rotating. Mostly, the blue and the magenta bars are one the input and the other is the output. The green bar is the coupler. Here, the blue and magenta bars cannot undertake a full 360 degree rotation. They are called rockers. This mechanism is called a double rocker four bar mechanism. The kinematic diagram of the second inversion will look like this, as only the connections with the ground are represented. The third inversion is created by grounding the magenta bar. In this inversion, the blue, red, and green bars are rotating. Mostly, the red and the green bars are one the input and the other is the output. The blue bar is the coupler. Here, the red and green bars cannot undertake a full 360 degree rotation. They are called rockers. This mechanism is called a double rocker four bar mechanism. The third inversion is also schematized as follows. The fourth and last inversion is created by grounding the green bar. In this inversion, the blue, red, and magenta bars are rotating. The blue and the magenta bars can be one the input and the other is the output. The red bar is the coupler. Here, the blue bar can undertake a full 360 degree rotation. It is a crank. The magenta bar cannot undertake a full 360 degree rotation. It is a rocker. This mechanism is called a crank rocker four bar mechanism. This schematic shows the kinematic diagram of the fourth inversion. The second example is dealing with the slider crank mechanism. The slider crank mechanism is constructed from three bars and one slider. They are connected together using three pin, turning, joints and one prismatic, translating, joint. Here there is four links, thus, there is four possible inversions. Here the inversions are distinct, dependent on the grounded link, and its position relatively to the slider. 
The first inversion is obtained by grounding the green bar, the bar along which the slider is translating. This is the original slider crank mechanism. The blue bar is the crank, the magenta bar is the coupler. The slider has a translation motion. It is also possible to ground the blue bar, the bar opposite to the slider. This is the most popular inversion of the slider crank mechanism. It is widely known as the inverted slider crank mechanism. In this inversion, the magenta and the green bars can complete a 360 degree rotation. The slider is translating along the green bar. A the green bar is not static. It is rotating. Thus the slider has a general motion. The third inversion is created by grounding the magenta bar. The magenta bar is the link connected to the slider by a pin joint. In this inversion, the blue bar is a crank and the green bar is a rocker. As the pin joint between the slider and the magenta bar is static, the slider can only have a fixed axis rotation. In this inversion, the green bar is sliding relatively to the slider. The last inversion is created by grounding the slider. The blue bar is the now the coupler. It is the only link that can complete 360 degree rotation. The slider is the ground. It is static. However, the green bar can translate relatively to the slider. Here are the four kinematic diagrams, where the grounded links are removed, and only the connections with the ground are represented. In the fourth inversion, the grounded link, the slider, is represented, as it is important to understand the kinematics of the inversion. This is a motion visualization of the slider crank mechanism. The blue bar can complete 360 degree rotation. It is a crank. The slider is translating along the green bar, which is the grounded link. This is a motion visualization of the popular inverted slider crank mechanism. The blue bar, opposite to the slider, is the ground. Both magenta and green bars can complete 360 degree rotations. The slider is translating along the green bar. It accomplishes a general motion. This is the third inversion, where the magenta bar is grounded, the bar which is connected to the slider with a turning pair. Here the slider can only accomplish a fixed axis rotation. The green bar is translating relatively to the slider. This is the last inversion. Here the slider is static, the ground. All bars are moving. The blue bar can complete a full 360 degree rotation. The magenta bar has a rocker motion. And the green can only translate. Its rotation is blocked by the prismatic joint, connecting it to the slider, the ground. The third example is interested in the inversions of the Watt 6 bar mechanism. Here there is six links, two ternary links and four bars. Thus there is six possible inversions. However, only two inversions are distinct. The first distinct inversion is obtained by grounding the bottom ternary link. 
grounding the other ternary link will lead to a similar inversion. The kinematic diagram disregards the grounded link and depicts only the connections with the ground. The second distinct inversion is obtained by grounding a bar. Grounding any other bar will lead to a similar inversion. We come at the end of this video about inversions of mechanisms. Thanks for watching.